Hello and welcome to Length, Weight, Capacity, Time and Money with me, Bill Henning. So the objectives for this session today is simply convert between units of length, weight, capacity, money and time in the same system. Okay, we'll also look at converting between metric and imperial units using a conversion graph. Let's look at converting measurements. If you look at length, weight and capacity, you'll see they're all constructed in the same manner. The smallest value is in milligrams. The next bigger value is in centigrams and centimeters and stuff like that. Uh, then you've got the denominated length, weight, capacity. So it's meters, grams and liters. And then finally, the largest is the kilo. So kilometers, kilograms and kiloliters. So keep that in your head going forward. And this will help you with the conversion of length, weight and capacity. Now in this example, let's convert 150,000 centimetres to kilometres. Now the biggest mistake that people make uh, during this part uh, of the conversion is they, for some reason, think they can either multiply or divide it by a thousand or they can multiply or divide it by a hundred. They don't know the process. Okay, so let me show you how you can quickly do this uh, and never get a mistake when you're converting again. So what you do is you arrange vertically from small to large, just like you see here. Okay, so there's your millimeters, the smallest, centimeters, meters, and kilometers. Now remember, we're dealing in length. Okay, then what you do is you add your conversion rates. Okay, so you draw a line going across there, and underneath that line, you put the conversion rates, and you can see it's relatively straightforward to remember. Millimetres is 10, centimetres to metres is 100, and millimetres to kilometres is 1,000. So you can see it goes up in values of 10s. Okay, just like your place value, it goes up in values of 10s. Then you insert the value to the relevant section. So you can see we're going to take this 150,000 centimetres, and we're going to fit it in here in centimetres. Okay, and now to convert this to kilometres, we must take it on this journey without jumping any steps. Okay, so convert down, you divide. So you can see in fractions, that's called a dividing line. So that's why it's constructed this way. So as you walk, as you go down the, the chart, you divide and as you go up, you multiply. So there you can see 150,000 divided by 100, you just knock off two zeros. You can see the number doesn't change. Uh, and then you do the same when you go from meters to kilometers, you divide by a thousand, you move a decimal point three places to the left, and you can see you can quickly convert any of the length weight capacity without making mistakes. But remember, you must take on that journey, whether it goes up or down, you cannot skip any of these uh, steps. Let's have a look at another couple of examples just to get it in your head. And it says here convert 200 milligrams to grams. There's your table laid out from small to large and your 10, 100 and 1000 denominations. Okay, so you just slip the 2000 in where it should go, milligrams. Now we want to go from milligrams to grams. So we follow the steps. So 2000 divided by 10 is 200. 200 divided by 100 is 2. So 2 grams is the same as 2000 milligrams. Let's have a look at another one. Convert two litres to millilitres. Again, you arrange them from small to large, 10, 100, 1,000. And don't forget your dividing line. And you put the two litres in where you want to start. So you're starting in the litres. This time we're going up. So we're going to multiply. So two multiplied by 100 is 200. 200 multiplied by 10 is 2,000. So you can see very, very quickly, you can come to the correct answer. Now imagine you're in an exam situation. If it's a non-calculated paper, this is the ideal way to convert metric measurements. So remember that little uh, grid here, the little table. And if you can remember how to construct that for any of the lengths, weight, capacity, then you'll never get a question wrong. Let's look at using a conversion graph to convert measurements. Okay, in this case, we're going to convert from metric to imperial measurements like kilometers to miles and you can see you have this graph constructed up the left hand side you have your calibration in kilometers 
across the bottom the horizontal you have your calibration in miles and to convert from one to other you just go to the converting line and go across or vice versa okay so let's have a look at a couple of examples and you'll see what i mean all right so approximately how many miles are 132 kilometers equal to so you got there to your company 132 kilometers you work your way across till you get to the conversion line then head down to the mileage calibration and you can see that the answer is 80 miles let's look at the other way now convert 28 miles to kilometers using the graph so again you start where you think 28 is okay and you go across and you will see that it's roughly 48 kilometers so that's how you use a conversion graph they're relatively simple once you practice them have a go let's see how you got on now remember this can be relatively easy if you're in a non-calculator paper just write it down so james runs 400 miles every day work out how far james runs in one week give your answer in kilometers okay so pause the video have a go at the question and see if you can answer it so how did you do well let me show you right first thing you have to do is you have to multiply 400 meters by 7 which gives you 2,800 meters. We now need to convert that to kilometers. So let's draw our little table. So we've got your millimeters, you've got your centimeters, you've got your meters, and you've got your kilometers. And then you put in your denominations 10, 100, and 1,000. And you can see how quickly this can be done. It can be done in seconds, and it stops you from worrying about converting or misconverting. So you put in your 2,800, you know you're going to go down the way, okay? Uh, so you're going from, so you can see you divide, you're going down the way, you divide, divide by 1,000, and you can see the answer is 2.8 kilometres. And if you got 2.8, well done. Let's have a go at this question. Kelly has two dogs, Pixie and Fifi. Pixie weighs 8.5 kilograms. Fifi is 720 grams lighter than Pixie. Work out how much Fifi weighs. State your units. So pause the video again and have a go and see if you can get it right. Now well, draw your little table. So milligrams, centigrams, grams and kilograms. Now you can see there you've got grams and you've got kilograms. Typical maths questions give you two different denominations. Well, you can't work with two different denominations, so you have to convert one to the other to make them both the same. Right, so you put your units in, your converting units in, 10, 100, 1,000, okay? And then you convert the 720 to kilograms, okay? So you divide that by 1,000. So you can now see that you put that 720 grams as 0 0.72, all right? Then all you do after that is you take the 8.5, deduct the 7 or the 0 0.72 and you can see that Fifi's weight is 7.7 .7 kilograms okay and if you got 7.78 .7 kilograms well done let's try this question this is from the city and guilds mock paper a woman is training for triathlon race which includes a 1.5 kilometer swim she needs her swim time to be 33 minutes she trains in a swimming pool, which is 50 metres long. She needs to know the average time she must swim each length. And what is this time? Uh, and it's, you've got to show your workings. OK, so the first thing you'll notice, again, typical with maths exam, it gives you in different denominations, kilometres and metres. You cannot work in different denominations. You must convert that. So using your little uh, table, you can convert 1.5 multiplied by 1,000 means you've got 1,500 metres. Now you need that, need to divide that number by the number of lengths. So you divide that by 50. And that means that within that 33 minutes, the swimmer must do 30 laps. So how long is it going to take per lap? Well, you can see that 33 divided by 30 means that they have 1.1 minute for each lap. Now at this point, uh, most people put in one minute and one second but that's not the case because time does not work in units of 10 now remember this is a digital answer from your uh, from your calculator 
Okay, so the answer is not one minute and one second. What you have to do is convert this to time, which is part of today's session. Okay, so all you do is you simply multiply 1.1 by 60. And you can see there, 1.1 times 60 gives you 66 seconds. So the actual time per lap, as per the answer, is 1 minute and 6 seconds. So remember, time doesn't work in values of 10. It works in values of 60. So whatever your answer is, you must multiply by 60. Now, converting metric and imperial values. Now, for this, you don't have to remember any formulas as such, because they will give you the formulas in the, the question. It's just understanding what that formula represents. OK, so if you can understand how the formula works, then it's just a simple converting uh, system. So Elaine is buying fruit and vegetables from the local market. She normally buys them in kilograms. But in a local market, they are in, they are sold in pounds. OK, so you can see there, one kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. Well, if you think about it logically, two kilograms must be 4.4 pounds. Three kilograms must be 6.6 6, 6 .6 because it's a ratio. You go up in proportion. That's called direct proportion. OK, so you may remember that from your ratio session. Now, she wants to buy about two kilograms of apple. About how many pounds is that? And you've just heard me say it's proportional. So you know what one is. One kilogram is 2.2. .2, so therefore, two kilograms must be 4.4. Right. Now, she's buying a sack with 11 pounds of potato. How many kilograms does the sack weigh? And now you know you've got 11 pounds and you know it's 2.2 .2 per kilogram. So you simply take 11 and divide it by 2.2 .2 and that will convert it to 5 kilograms. OK, so it's all about understanding this ratio here. OK, and if you can understand that, then you can just calculate just about anything. So let's have a look at some other examples. Now, Selma is travelling to Europe by car. Her car shows her speeds in miles per hour. Now, one mile equals 1.6 kilometre. All right. So when she drives at 75 miles per hour, how many kilometres is that? Well, you know one equals 1.67. So 75 must be 75 times 1.67. And you can see the answer is 120 kilometres per hour. Now, the speed limit in the motorway she's driving through is 80 kilometres per hour. What is that in miles? Again, as long as you know how to work this ratio here, OK, you can answer that question relatively easily. So you just take the 80 kilometres, divide it by 1.6, because that's the equivalent of a mile. And you can see the answer is 50 miles per hour. So it's about this ratio. If you can understand that, you will crack it. Time comes up often in a maths exam, okay? And you know how they work in measurements of 60, stuff like that. So a 12 hour clock versus a 12 hour clock. When you're doing your exam and you have to give an answer, always give your answer on either a 24 hour clock or the British Standard Time, so AM and PM. Never mix the two up because you will lose points, okay? So let's have a look. Right, so the digital clock, digital clock uses a 24-hour system. Then the 12-hour 12 12 hour clock goes from 12 a.m. to 11.59, and then from 12 p.m., which is noon, to 11.59 p.m. at night. Okay? For example, 8 a.m. is 8 o'clock in the morning, and 8 p.m. is 8 o'clock in the evening. Now, a 24-hour clock goes from 0, 0, 0 to 23.59, and then back to 0 again at midnight. OK, so for example, 0630 is half past six in the morning and 1830 is half past six in the evening. Now, let's working out times. This is an area where people get wrong as well. Try and keep it simple. All right. So the best way to work out times is to split it into chunks. Right. For example, Jack sets off for work at 7.30 a.m. and arrives at 9.05. And it says, how long does the journey take him? Well, break it down. 
So 7.30 to 8 o'clock is 30 minutes. 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock is 1 hour. 9 o'clock to 5 past 9 is 5 minutes. Then you just simply add them up and you can see the total time taken was 1 hour and 35 minutes. So break it down into chunks and make it easier for yourself and you'll save yourself valuable points in your exam. Let's look at timetables. This is another area where people can slip up and lose valuable points. Now timetables have rows and columns. Rows are horizontal and columns are vertical. You need to know how to read several different types of timetables. So let's have a look. Okay. Now step one, find the stop you want. Let's say you want to arrive at Liverpool Street from this before 9.30. Okay. So you're starting from Liverpool Street and the best way is to work backwards. Okay. Uh, going along that row to find the last one before a certain time. So you can see that if you get the 9.33, you will be late. So it's got to be before 9.30. So you're going to get the 9.03. You work your way backwards. So you find the time that the bus train gets to the stop you want to get on at. So you go back there and you work there. You can see that's your dis. Okay, so that means you need to catch the 7.28 in the morning train or bus, whatever it is you're taking. OK, and that's how you use timetables. Have a go. Here is part of a timetable for a bus. A bus leaves Southall at 10.38. At what time should the bus arrive at Newton? So stop the, uh, the video. Have a think and see if you can answer it. So how did you do? OK, you can see there. 10.38, you go down to it matches Newton and you can see that it takes 11. You need to arrive at 11.09. Now, how long will the journey take? Well, again, you break it down into chunks. 10.30 to 11 is 22 minutes. 11 to 11.09 is 9 minutes. Add time together and you can see the journey will take 31 minutes from South Hall to Newton. Now this one, remember, pause the video and see if you can get the answer. Here is part of a train timetable. Freddie wants to travel from Randallstown to Ballycastle. He arrives at Randallstown at 13.03 to catch the train next to Ballycastle. How long does this train journey take? How did you do? Well, 13 1400 is 45 minutes. 1400 to 14.09 is 9 minutes. Add them both together and you can see the journey took 54 minutes. And have you got 54 minutes? Good stuff. This timetable, okay. Now Jennifer lives in Antrim and her friend lives in Ballycastle. Now Jennifer has a five minute walk from Antrim to the train station. Okay, her friend is a 30 minute walk from Ballycastle to the train station. And Jennifer wants to arrive at her friend's house before 3 p.m. OK, so plan Jennifer's journey to her friend's house. Pause the video and see how you got on. OK, remember where you can work backwards. OK, now you can see there you want to arrive. And you get back to 1300 as your starting point. OK, and so you have to work out you leave at 1255 to arrive five minutes uh, to get your train. OK, catch the train at 1300. OK, arrive in Ballycastle at 14.09. And that's when you arrive. And you can see you reach the friend's house at 14.39. So that's you plan the journey from leaving home to start. OK, and you do that by doing things in reverse. Let's look at problems involving money. There are several types of problems that you will encounter involving money. Some are harder than others. OK, so converting between pounds and pennies, relatively simple because they work in values of 10. OK, so many questions require you to add and subtract values in both pounds and pennies. So you need to be able to switch between the two. And it's just a simple case of either multiplying or dividing by 100. OK, now to go from pounds to pennies, you multiply by 100. OK, and to go from pennies to pounds, you divide. It's as simple as that. OK, so for example, uh, convert 327 into pennies. We multiply 3.27 3 by 100, so the numbers don't change. 
all you're doing is manipulating the decimal point, moving it two places to the right, and that gives you 327 pennies. OK, because remember, a lot of the questions will give you, uh, and it doesn't matter what the denomination is, they normally give you them in different denominations, and you cannot work in different denominations, so you have to convert one to the other. And it doesn't matter which way you round, you convert them to as long as they match. OK, now convert 47 pence into pounds. Again, we divide by 100. So 47 pence becomes 0 0.47. All right, and that's how you convert from one to the other in money. Let's look at rates of pay. OK, the rate of a pay is the cost of something per unit of time. For example, a phone call may cost 25 per minute or someone may get paid £11.70 an hour. OK, often questions require you to combine rates of pay with a fixed fee or combine two different rates. And when, if you've done the formula session in Bodmus, you'll see good examples in there of this happening. Now, Sarah earns £9.80 per hour and works 30 hours a week. She earns £32.50 in tips. How much did she earn in a week? This is where your Bodmus formula comes in. OK, so you can see there, £9.80 for 30 hours. Calculate that first and then add the tips. And you can see the answer is £326.50. Another example, Stephen wants to retail his bathroom and replace his shower. OK, so the tiler charges £24 per hour and says it will take 11 hours work. The plumber charges £28.50 per hour and says it will take nine hours to fit the work. So it says, how much will it cost Stephen in total to do both jobs? Uh, a combination of working out the rates of pay and using Bodmus to solve the puzzle will make your workings relatively simpler. OK, so watch how this is done. So you can see there, based on the information in the question, the tiler is charging 24 times 11. So you put that in brackets. The plumber is charging £28.50 times 9. So using your Bodmus rules, you calculate these both these separate before you add them together. OK, and you can see once you've done that, the answer is £520.50 in total. And look at the workings, keep them simple, and that's the great thing about Bodmus. It makes your working really simple. Look at discounts and increases as percentages. Uh, this was covered in your percentages session, so it'll be worthwhile going back over percentages if you need to. Okay, now often questions are asked to find the new price of an item after it has been increased or discounted by a certain percentage. Uh, now, a price decrease, let's use a calculator first. A pair of trainers cost £45. If there's a sale in which there's 20% off the price, what will be the price, new price of the trainers? OK, and you can see there, 45 divided by 100. What that does is find the value of 1%. Multiply it by 80 because you're taking off the 20%. OK, and that leaves 36. So the price of the new price of the trainers with the 20% off is £36. OK, now, alternatively, we could have found what 10% of £45 was without a calculator. And all you do is you divide by 10, which gives you £4.50. Then you double it to get the value of 20% and then deduct it from the original value of the trainers. So you can see there, 10% equals £4.50. 20% equals double that, so it's £9. OK, you then take the £45, deduct the £9, and what is left is 36. And you can see with or without a calculator, you'll get the same answer. Now let's look at a price increase. Uh, Alicia bought a home for uh, 210,000 last year. She has a house valued at one year later and was told that the value of the house has increased by 10%. It says calculate the new value of the house. Again, the formula is just the same. All right, but this time you're adding. So 21, 210,000, okay. Divided by 100 gives you the value of 1%. You multiply it by the 110 because that adds the 10% back on. And you can see that the final answer is 23, uh, 231,000 is the new value. Or alternatively, you could have found what 10% was in its own and then added it to the 21,000. OK. So now you try it. Right, a cricket club sells uh, 5,062 tickets for a charity match. 
3,484 are adult tickets and the rest are under 18 tickets. And there's the prices there. Now, 85% of the ticket sale for the event, the rest goes to community projects. How much do the club give to community projects? So pause the video, have a go, and see what your answer is. So how did you do? Now well, let's have a look. All right, so you deduct the number of children from ad, uh, adults from children, and you can see there are 1,578 children. Okay, you take that for the adults and you multiply it by 18. Again, look how Bodmer solves this for you. You do the adults separate from the children at 12 pounds. Okay, and you do the calculations, and you can see the total value is 81,648 pounds. Now you have to take 85% off that, okay? So it's that value divided by 100, take the 85 off at this point and multiply by 15. And that tells you 12,247 pound 20 pence went to community projects. So have a look at that question. Think about the process involved. And if you got that answer, well done. Now let's look at a typical level two question. Okay, this table shows how much a garage pays its staff, and there's the pay rates. Uh, last week the mechanic worked seven and a half hours each day from Monday to Saturday. She did not work Sunday. Her normal rate of pay is ten pound eighty per hour. Work out her total pay for last week. So pause the video, have a go, and see how you got on. So how did you do? Well, let's use Bodmus, our good old friend Bodmus. You can see here we're doing Monday to Friday at normal rate. So seven and a half hours times five days times £10.80 will give you how much she earned during the week. And then you have Saturday's rate, which is different. You have seven and a half hours at time and a quarter. And 1.25 represents time and a quarter in digital form. Okay, and then you've got ten, multiplied by £10.80. Then you simply do the calculation to work out how much she earned for the six days and you can see the answer is 506.25 now if you got 506 pound 25 brilliant okay now as an add-on to this question uh, there's a section you don't see here where it says use approximation to check your answer okay uh, and this is where uh, doing your check calculation using approximation is slightly different from a reverse check calculation okay so what you do Right, as you round both these numbers, remember you only pick one part of your workings. So you pick this final part here, you change the 405 to 410, you change 101 to 100, and if you add them both together, you get the answer of 510. All right, now it's important you learn how to do approximate check calculations because it's where you can lose valuable points in your exam. Now you can see the answers don't match exactly, but it's close enough. And that's what we call in maths an educated guess. Okay, so think about as soon as you see the word approximate, then round your figures off and add them together. And as long as you get a rough answer that's roughly correct, then you'll get the points. Length, weight, capacity, time and money. I hope that helped. Thank you.